Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. We thank God for another opportunity. Lord, give me to come and share the word of God with you. Praise God. On this Wednesday, it is the 28th day. Uh, 28th day, praise God, of August 2024. And again, I am Pastor James A. Dance. We have Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God once again, declaring that Christ is the answer. He is the only answer, praise God, to the problems that we are facing today. And there is no other, praise God, solution except that we turn to the Lord, repent of our sins, praise God, and accept Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. But I hope and pray that on this Wednesday, uh, generally, this is what we call Bible study night. And uh, afternoon, rather, it's afternoon right now. But some of you, praise God, it'll be probably later on before you get a chance, opportunity to study with me. But I hope that you are prepared, praise God, to study God's Word with me right out of the Bible, the heart of God's Word. Once again, Matthew 28 is what we're looking at. And I do encourage you to get your pencil, your tablet, your paper, and write down the scripture that God has given me for you today. We have quite a few scriptures that we're going to look at. And it's important uh, if you can't uh, find them in the Bible as quick as you need to, then just write them down. And later on, you can go back and you can, praise God, get an opportunity to look at them at your pace and praise God a little bit more in details. But we're looking at Matthew 28, uh, beginning at verse 16. This is the last message in this series. Part four is what we're looking at today. Amen. A very important word from the Lord. As a matter of fact, the last words of Christ uh, before, before he uh, vacated the premises here. The last words of Christ to his disciples, Matthew 28, and we'll begin reading at verse 16. Look with me, if you please. Amen. It reads, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, he says here, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he told his disciples in 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, teaching them, verse 20, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he says, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, bless you. Thank you, Lord, for once again giving me an opportunity, Lord, to come and to share your word, the pure, unadulterated word. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Now, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit might go before me and might touch the hearts, prepare the hearts of those whom you will bring to this broadcast today to hear what thus said the Lord. For I realize, Lord, that it is not by might, not by power, but it is by your spirit that this great work is to be accomplished. Now, Lord, you speak through me, and you you be glorified, Lord. You get the honor, the praise, and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Verse number 20, teaching them, the Lord says, teach them, praise God, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. The promise here of Christ's presence is what we have used as our subject throughout these messages here. Amen. Part four. It's part four. But now in the last three messages, uh, we, we have thus far, we examined what has been called the Great Commission. The Great Commission that God gave to his disciples. And in these, praise God, last words of Christ, he assigned to his children a particular work, a work that they were to perform until he returned. Very specific work is what he gave them. Praise God. And it's a specific work that 
Well, basically, it's the last words of Christ, really, huh? Praise God. And uh, usually the last words of a person is very important. Yes. Usually when uh, a person speaks his last words before he departs this earth, then those words are especially important, especially when they're coming from the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, who is the creator, praise God, of the world. And the Bible says he's the creator, not only the world, but all that dwell therein. Praise God. And I believe God. I believe the Lord. Amen. But now, in this last message in this series that we are going to teach today, uh, what we want to do is look at the importance, the very importance of not only the teachings that the disciples were to teach the new disciples, not only that, but now the importance. We want to look at the importance of the character the character of the teacher himself. Amen. Very important. The character. Not just what you're teaching, but the character of that person that's doing the teaching. That's real important. Amen. But now, and as Christ's disciples, we must, what the Bible says, we must be doers of the word and not just what? Not just hearers of the word. Now, that's what the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us. And if we are, and I hope that we intend to be, if we are to be effective in carrying out this great commission that the Lord has given us, then uh, the life that we live in this world, it can help us accomplish this mission. It could help us or it could, it could hinder us. The life that we live, the lifestyle that we portray uh, to those whom we are witnessing to. How are you living? How are you living? Very important. See, made, Jesus made this very clear. That means our lifestyle, how we live it. He made it very clear in his sermon on the mountain. Our lifestyle, how we live, how we talk, how we carry ourselves in this world as we go forth to give the great commission here. Look at Matthew 5 then. Let's see what Christ says here himself now. Your lifestyle, how you live as you portray yourself to be a Christian. And as you say that you are been commissioned to go and to give the word of God to the people, how are you living? Good question. Okay. Christ says it's important. Matthew 5, look at 14 there, 5 and 14. Christ says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That's what Christ says in verse 14. Look at 15. Christ says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the world. All that are in the world. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, he says, and glorify your Father which is in heaven heaven. So now what is Christ saying here? Christ is teaching us that his followers can best make disciples out of others in the world by living a life of good works. Let your light so shine. Huh? Living a life, praise God, of good works. Living uh, the Jesus kind of life, actually what it is, amen, which will give credibility. When we live uh, the, the life, the life, the Jesus kind of life, the Christ life, it gives credibility, huh? To the gospel that we are preaching, that we are teaching, that we are witnessing when your lifestyle lines up with what you're teaching. Amen. That's all. Hmm? Uh, when we are, praise God, dead and gone, we often say when we're dead and gone, it is the, the life that we live that shall speak for us. Amen. Praise God. Your life, you know, you, I tell people often, you know, don't, don't uh, spend a lot of time trying to preach me into heaven. It's because the life that I live and what I've stood for these years, that, that's, that's enough. Amen. The life that we live definitely will speak for us. Amen. But Christ put the emphasis upon uh, the way we live. Let your light so shine. But now, in that verse 20, verse 20 again, in Matthew 28 there, the Lord said, we are to teach them to observe all things whatsoever, he says, that I have 
commanded you. Hmm? Yes, that's what the Lord says. Teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And the word here, teach, look at the word teach them. It means what? To educate. It means to educate. It means to educate. And, and to educate is not just teaching knowledge by words, but also teaching by example. Example by our lifestyle, how you live, how you talk, how you carry yourself uh, around people. Amen. See, and he says that we are to teach them to observe. Now, the word observe here, it means to guard. To teach them to observe, to guard, to keep watch. Be watchful. Hmm? To be watchful uh, of, of what's going on around you or what people are saying and how they are living. Huh? Teach them to observe. Praise God. Amen. Keep watch on something here. But now, we are not just to tell people, and that's important that we, 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 we consider this. We're not just to tell people what Jesus said, but to be living an example of how Jesus lived, the Jesus kind of life. Praise God. We ought to live the Jesus kind of life. Are you? You that say you're saved and say you're children of God, are you living the Jesus kind of life? Huh? That's the question right there. Are you living it? Amen. Praise God. We are to teach people Christ's word. Yes. We are to. And teach them to observe the behavior of the teachers as well. Praise God. Amen. The teachers too. We must teach them that God's grace is not a license to sin or to live any kind of way. Praise God. Now that we're saved, we live differently. Uh, as Brother Milton said on this message on Sunday, there is a before and there is an after, uh, praise God, lifestyle when we are saved. And this is what we ought to teach. We must teach the, uh, the uh, disciples, uh, those who are to be made disciples, teach them that although the gift of salvation is free, but the cost of discipleship is high. Yes. Amen. Gift of salvation is free. But the cost of discipleship is very high. Amen. We are to teach them these things. But we're not to teach them uh, 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 how to be rich. And that's what we hear today. Oh, boy. Everybody wants to have the blessings. And when they say blessings, they really want to, most of them want to be rich. We're not called to teach people how to be rich, not even how to be successful in this world. Huh? This world is passing away. Praise God, we're trying to get people to come out from this world. That's the gospel, not how you can be comfortable huh, in this world and have the uh, successful according to the world standards. That's not what we're called to teach people, not at all. But now that's what's being taught. Huh? We're teaching people how to live the Jesus kind of life, the Jesus kind of life. Well, Pastor, what, what is that? What is this Jesus kind of life that you're talking about here? Well, it's a life of humility. Mm? It's humility. It's a life of sacrifice. Mm. Yeah. It's a life of dedication to the work that the Lord has assigned to us. Like he was dedicated to doing the will of his father. Are we dedicated to carrying out this great commission? Praise God. Speaking and telling people what the Lord has commanded us as well as living the lifestyle. Becoming a living, as we say, a living epistle. Hmm? Praise God. A living epistle. This is what God called us to do as we uh, go forth and uh, share this great commission with people. And it was by education. It was by education and example that the great apostle Paul taught the new disciples. Yes, over and over again. He he harbors on the example here. And I want y'all to understand that. And he does so because it is important. Huh? How can I believe what you say when your lifestyle and your living and your conversations are altogether different than what you're saying? Hmm? Amen. There's a conflict there. There's a problem there. Huh? But now, Paul... Uh, taught by education and by example. And he taught his disciples to do the very same thing. 
Hey, amen. And, and by right, we ought to do the same thing ourselves. Let's see, can we find 1 Corinthians? Let's look at Paul now. We're going to look at a few scriptures here where Paul seems to, uh, you know, uh, 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 stay in that area of, uh, praise God, uh, living that sacrificial life, living that life that uh, imitates Christ's life. Amen. And imitate what he was teaching, his example. Let's look at some of the scriptures, how Paul continuously, 1 Corinthians 4. Let's find 1 Corinthians 4. And you write these down now. Let's see if we dial him up here. 1 Corinthians 4, and we're going to look at 15. 4 and 15. If you can't find them uh, quickly and keep up with me, then write them down. 1 Corinthians 4, 15. Paul says here, for though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, he tell them. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you. Paul says, in Christ, I have begotten you through the gospel. Through the gospel now, I brought you to Christ. Look at verse 16. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers, that's imitators, be ye imitators, followers of me. Hmm? That's what Paul said. Be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. Hmm? As I, my behavior reflects the behavior of Christ. I want you to reflect the same type of behavior. That's what he says here. Praise God. Look at 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going over to 11 there. And we'll look at a few scriptures here, but write them down, first of all. And uh, I'm going to dial on over to 11. Look at one there. I think we're going to look at just one, just a portion of one there. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. What did Paul say there? Be ye followers of me, imitators of me. Imitate me, the way I carry it myself, the way I work for a living. Huh? And to help take care of myself and the brothers that was with me, a tent maker is what he was, and how I did not, I was not a burden to anyone. He said, be followers and imitators of me, Pray, even as I also am of Christ. Amen. Christ worked as a carpenter. He was a tent maker. And praise God, if you are a child of God, you ought to be gainfully employed. And you're not, not to be a beggar. Praise God. Preachers, you ought not to be a beggar. Huh? Praise God. You ought to work. If it's at all possible, praise God, you ought to work and not fleece the, uh, the, the sheep out of their, 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 their blessings and their money and so forth. But Paul said, be imitated of me. Huh? I work, you work. Amen. Over and over again now. Paul taught the young disciples to teach by example. Teach by example. The old saying is that uh, people would, uh, you know, would rather what? See a sermon than just to hear one. Just to hear a sermon. They'd rather see it. Eh? And this is true, praise God, even today. Mm, I can't hear what you're saying for seeing what you're doing. Amen. And a lot of uh, people that say they're believers are not living the Jesus life, the lifestyle of Christ. Uh, look at Philippians, Paul again. Again, now we're going to look at a few scriptures here uh, where Paul is telling us that we ought to be imitators of the Lord, imitators of him also, who also was a follower of Christ. Philippians 3.17. Let's look at that. 3.17, 3.17, write it down now, ah, there she is, 3.17, you write it down, and uh, then uh, if you can't uh, uh, find it, then you can come back later on. Paul's emphasized, he's put emphasis upon the fact that as lights of the world, then we are mannequin in the windows of the world. We are to be seen, we are to be heard, amen, we are to follow Christ's example and his example. Philippians 3.17, Paul says, brethren, be followers, there it is ago, that's imitators, together of me, and mark them which walk. Those that say they're Christians, huh? You're still cursing, amen? You're still drinking, you're still doing all these things, you're partying, huh? Praise God, you're still involved in all these things. He said, you mark them which walk the lifestyle, so as ye have us, for an example, look at what they're doing. Look at what we're doing. Look at me, Paul says. I'm a follower of Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Look at me and how I'm living. 
Listen to my conversation. You don't hear me cursing. You don't hear me using language that's unbecoming to a Christian. Look at me. Huh? And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Then verse 18 now. For many walk. Many say they are believers. Many people say they are Christian and they are believers. Paul said, of whom I have told you often. And now I tell you even weeping. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. He said, I'm weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Many say they're Christian. They walk, they walk in this walk, but they're talking another talk. Huh? Paul said, grieves me. I'm weeping. I'm weeping. I'm even weeping. Huh? Because these are enemies. These people turn people away from the Lord with their behavior. Shame on you. Praise God, and you're going to have to pay the penalty and the cost for this type of behavior. If you're going to be worldly, then just be worldly. Go on out there. But quit imitating a, a believer, imitating a follower of Christ if you're not walking the walk, if you're not talking the talk. Now, that's what Paul says here. They're enemies of the cross of Christ. Huh? See, and Paul, Paul was, he was aware. He was very well aware. Praise God. He was very well aware that many... During his time, praise God, called themselves Christians. Yes, they called themselves Christians, but were what? But they were not. They were not. Their conversation, praise God, their lifestyle, their worldly lifestyle was anything but holy. Mm, mm, mm. You got to wear the fashion. You got to be a fashion show. You got to, you got to dress like this and dress like that. Praise God. Paul said they were like that during his day. It's the same today. Worldliness, though, my brothers. Let me say this here. Worldliness and holiness does not mix. It does not mix. It doesn't do not mix. Amen. <laughs> Look at Philippians 4 then. Go on down now. You you get three. Just turn over to four. Paul, same old song. Praise God. The same old song. He said the same thing over and over again. Meaning what? It must be important. Philippians 4 9. He said, those things which ye have both learned and received, and heard, and seen in me. There it is. Hmm? Then he said, do, do, do those things. Imitate these things. huh? And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace is going to be with you. Now that's the apostle. That's what he says here. Over and over again. Over and over again. The apostle Paul, in his letters, he emphasizes the importance of teaching by Example. Yes, teaching by example. Amen. Many preachers and many people that are, are witnessing, I'm telling uh, the telling the people to do, uh, do 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 as I say, but not as I do. Do as I say, but not as I do. But no, that certainly wasn't that wasn't the mind of the apostle of the Lord. Praise God. And that wasn't the mind of the apostle Paul. Hmm? Do as I uh, say, but not as I do. That wasn't the mind of the Lord. No, it wasn't. Praise God. All through his letters, the Apostle Paul encouraged people to follow me as I follow Christ. When I don't follow Christ, you stop following me. Huh? It's amazing to me how so many people follow these gigolo preachers. Huh? Praise God. I know why they do it, though, because, and, uh, you know, they want to dress fancy like they dress fancy. They want to have the cars and the houses that they have. So, they, you know, they, they got the greed bug and they just follow these same people. Amen. Go on down to First Thessalonians. Paul. We're still looking at Paul and his encouragements. First Thessalonians 1. Let's look at one now. And his encouragements to, praise God, to, to imitate the Lord. Be imitators. If we're going to be successful in carrying out the Great Commission, your lifestyle, the way you live, is going to make a big difference. First Thessalonians 1, look at 5 there. First chapter, verse 5, Paul says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only. That is, not just by words. Anybody can have a lot of words, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As ye know what manner of men we were, what manner of men, how we lived, what manner of men we were among you for your sake. You are aware of how we live. Look at verse 6 now. And ye became followers, imitators of us. 
and of the Lord, he says, having received the word in much afflictions with joy and the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 7 again. He come back to what he said in verse 5. Huh? So that ye were examples. Huh? We were examples to you. Now, you are examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Oh, boy. We were examples to you, and you have imitated us. You are examples to those in Macedonia and Achaia. Amen. See, learning, well, you know, as, as men, we got to lead by example. Preacher, y'all got to lead by example. You got to lead by example and say only what Christ said. What Christ said. Amen. That's important. Amen. That was a Paul's motto. Say what the Lord says and live by example. Are you? Are you preachers living by example? Are you Christians living by example today? You that are believers, huh? The same standards for you as for a preacher or whoever. You got to live by example. We teach, yes, but we teach by through the word of God and by example by the way that we live. That's Paul's, that's Paul's word, Paul's motto over and over again. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving some scriptures here. And we see that over and over again, he stayed upon the fact that if we're going to be effective in our witnesses, we got to, praise God, we got to uh, be an example and the way that we live, through the way that we live, the way that we speak and the way that we carry ourselves. Amen. Look at Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, uh, uh, again, go over to chapter two. You ought to be there. Uh, just turn it over. I'm going to flip to two there. First Thessalonians 2, it's important how you live. Remember, Christ said, you're the light. We're the light of the world. Hmm? How you live. Praise God, how you live makes a big difference in the effectiveness of your witnessing and carrying out the Great Commission. First Thessalonians 2 and 10. Look at 2 and 10. He said, ye are witnesses, and God also. And God also. How holily. And what he tell the people, you're witnesses, people, these people that he's trying to bring to the Lord, you are witnesses. And God also is a witness how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves. How are you behaving yourselves out there? Name in the name of the Lord. How we behaved ourselves among you that believe. You, you notice our behavior. Oh, God, the question is, how are you? You say you're a Christian. How are you behaving? How are you behaving, huh? Praise God. Look at uh, uh, verse 11. Go on down to 11. As ye know how we exhorted, exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. What did you charge them? What did you exalt them to do, uh, Paul? Verse 12. That ye would walk worthy. Walk. That's how you live. That's how you speak. Walk worthy of God, who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Verse 13, for this cause also, thanks be to God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, huh? when you receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. It'll work in you too, that believe. Look at verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers, imitators. That is, you became imitators of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. That is, those are Jews that were attacking the word of God and dogging and following Paul everywhere he went. They had to suffer. Amen. Uh, go to Second Thessalonians. We're, we're looking at Paul. Now, Paul... He, he's constantly telling us that our behavior should be the same as Christ and the same as he, his was when he was witnessing to the people. Second Thessalonians 3, 7. 3 and 7. Let's find that one. 3 and 7. There it is. He says here, for yourself know how ye ought to follow. That means imitate. He's still on this thing here. How to follow to imitate us. For well, we have behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Behavior, there it is. Your behavior, 
how you carry yourself. You out here saying you love the Lord, but now you're still in the world. Huh? You still want to do the things that the world do. You want to talk like the world. You want to live like the world, but you say that you love the Lord. Paul said, you brethren know how you ought to imitate us. For we have behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Huh? Praise God. Shame on you that say you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and your behavior is not up to par. Hmm? Your conversation. People don't believe a word to say because your mouth is still filthy. Hmm? Look at 1 Timothy 4 and 12. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Now, that's what Paul said. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example. There it is again. I'm just reading you. I'm just saying what he said. Paul said, be an example of the believers in word and in deed. In your words that you teach from the word of God and your conversation, your deeds. Huh? Be an example in your charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Then 13, he says, till I come, you give attendance to reading and to exhortation and give, 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 give some uh, attendance to a doctrine here. Neglect, verse 14, not the gift. Then neglect not the gift. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate, verse 15, upon these things. Give thyself wholly, completely to them that thy profiting may appear, hmm? may appear. Be an example, that is. To all is what Paul says here. Take heed unto thyself, verse 16, and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, be an example, doing this, uh, in doing this, be an example, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Is that what we're doing? We're trying to bring people to the Lord. We want to see people saved. Well, are we behaving in such a manner that would help in this cause? Hmm? That's the question that the Lord is asking today. Is your behavior that of a genuine Christian? Amen. Praise God. Look at Hebrews 6 now. Come on now. We're going to wind him up here. Look at Hebrews 6 and 12. We're looking at Paul and how he, he's, hot, he's completely immersed in the fact that behavior, uh, we should imitate Christ and imitate him in our behavior if we are to be effective in carrying out the Great Commission. Hmm? Praise God. Look at Hebrews. Come on. Hebrews 6. You copy this down now. Hebrews 6 and 12. Praise God. 6 and 12. Paul says here that ye be not slopeful, slopeful, but followers. That is, he keep on imitators of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hmm? We're to imitate them. Huh? Praise God. Imitate the Lord. Imitate the believers that have gone before us. Amen. Look at Hebrews 13, 7. Go on down to 13. Hebrews, you should be still there in Hebrews if you're following along with me. 13 and 7 Hebrews. Remember them which have the rule. Talking about leaders now. Leadership is important. Remember them that have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Uh, in other words, they've been an example. They, they, they've been an example of a faithful, true believer considering, he says, the end of their conversation. Huh? Praise God. Imitating their, their conversation, their lifestyle. Huh? Praise God. It's good to see believers that live for the Lord, live a simple life for the Lord. Amen. Not flamboyant, not want to be seen, not want everybody to, praise God, to give them accolades. Praise God. Christ didn't live that life. Paul certainly didn't live that life. Well, believers today. Shouldn't live that life. But now as we close, as we close for today, amen, let us not forget Paul's letter to Titus, though. Paul's letters to Titus. He wrote to Titus, uh, and over and over again, over and over again, he emphasized the importance of good works. Our being example, if we are truly sincere about accomplishing this great commission. Amen. Look at Titus 2, 4, 2, 7. Titus 2, 7 now, book of Titus, praise God. And if you look at 2 and 7 there, he says to uh, Titus, Paul says to Titus, in all things show thyself to be a pattern of good works. Show yourself to be a pattern 
of good works. Hmm? Praise God. Good works. Let your light shine. Praise God. Christ says in, in, on the mount there that people might see your good works and glorify the Father. And here Paul is saying the same thing to young Titus here. In all things show thyself a pattern of good works. Hmm? Going on over to 14. You're still in second chapter. You should be there. Going down to 14. Who gave himself, talking about the Lord now. He said, talking about the Lord, who gave himself that he might redeem us, what? From all iniquity, all sin. Redeem from all sin and purify unto himself a peculiar people that are zealous of good works. Zealous of making sure that the life that we live mimics, portrays that of Christ. You ought to be very mindful of that. Going over to chapter 3 of Titus. Chapter 3. Paul, it's important. We're mannequins. We are mannequins in the windows of the world. It's important that we live the life that we speak about, that we teach about or preach about. Titus 3, 8. This is a faithful saying. That these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which believe in God might be careful to maintain good works. You say you believe in God. You say you're a Christian. You say you love the Lord. How do you live? Are you separated? Have you come out from among them? Huh? Are you still trying to have friends in the world and friends in the Lord at the same time? You got to choose ye this day. You got to make a choice because if you stand firmly for God, then you ain't going to have a lot of friends in this world. And that should be all right with you. Praise God for as long as I got King Jesus. Oh, that song says I really don't need nobody else. Huh? As long as I got King Jesus. But I thank God there's a few brethren that love the Lord just as I do. And we are, praise God, we are friends. Amen. Go to 314. Stay in that third chapter, Titus, and look at 14. And let ours also learn to maintain good works, he says. That is again. For necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. You're going to be unfruitful. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to do this work or carry out the Great Commission if your lifestyle is not that of holiness, that of separation. It must be. Amen. Praise God. To carry out this Great Commission. Hmm? According to Paul, who called himself the least he was the least, he called himself the least of all the apostles. I, I call him the greatest of the apostles. Amen. Paul said, in order for us to accomplish and be successful in carrying out the Great Commission, we got to first of all be saved. And that's number one. Praise God. You got to be saved. You got to be saved. You got to know that you've been blood bought and you've been baptized. He said, go ye therefore and, and, and teach and baptize. You, have you been baptized? Huh? And then going where this Holy Spirit leads you. Hmm? Praise God. You, you carrying out the commission, you got to be, uh, the Holy Spirit like the wind and he blows upon us. He leads us here. He leads us, guides us. And we got to be mindful of the fact that we are being led by the Spirit if we are saved and being mindful of the power and the presence. Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of time. Are you mindful? Praise God that your power, God gives us power when we live the life and when we teach the unadulterated word of God, he gives us power. We got to be mindful of that. Praise God. He has given us power and he's given us his presence. Praise God. Always. Huh? Teaching others the word of God. Nothing but the word of God. Not this fabrication of the word that we hear today. Huh? God wants you to have, be rich so you can have an airplane and you can have this, a Mercedes. No, 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 no. That's a fabrication there. Amen? But last and least of all, we got to be living. If we're going to be successful, you got to live this word. You got to live the word, teach the word, preach the word, but you got to live the word. And let us remember, praise God. He said, we are to go uh, begin in Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost part. He said, but now remember now that the teaching begins at home, first of all. If you don't have the respect of your family, if you don't have the respect of your family, you, you really need to just uh, delay going anywhere telling anybody about the Lord because charity begins at home. Teaching begins at home. Then spread abroad. Amen. Then it can spread abroad. Teaching and living it out, first of all, in our homes. Praise God. Because our children learn through 
watching and observing our lives, our lifestyle as parents. That's right. Amen. We educate them as we live a godly life, hmm? as we live godly before them and also before our neighbors. Huh? Love the Lord with all thy heart, thy mind and soul, and thy neighbors. What's your, what the neighbors think about you? Are you living the type of life around your neighbors that they can believe that God is in this person? He's living for the Lord. Can, are you successful there? Huh? Praise God. This is where, this is the world where we began to carry out our great commission at home. Start at home and in your neighborhood. Then spread abroad. Amen. Praise God. That's about here for a word of prayer. Father, bless you. Lord, I thank you for giving me an opportunity once again to share your word. Now, Lord, I pray that by your spirit, Lord, you would uh, take these words that you have placed in my heart. And Lord, you would put them in the hearts and minds of those that you bring into the broadcast today. Help us, Lord, to uh, look at our lives. Take inventory. How we live in. How we live in. Paul made it very plainly, Lord, that it's so important that we live the life, that we live the life. If we're to be successful, praise God, in bringing souls to Christ. And Lord God, I'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you receive this word from the Lord today, if you receive this word as from the Lord, as usual, pray for me. That's all I need you to do. I need you to pray for me. Pray that God will continuously speak through me and I can bring you a word uh, a couple times this uh, throughout the week until God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Pray for me now. Then share this word. If you have means, if you maybe you got a podcast, maybe you able to uh, take a button and hit a button here and take your phone and put it on, will you share this word? Huh? If you believe this is the word of God, amen, you have duty bound to share this word if you believe this word is from the Lord. Then subscribe. And when we come again, praise God, as of now, we're scheduled to come back on Sunday. But now, if the Lord tell me to come before then and give me something, I will bring it to you. But as of our schedule, Sunday, the Lord's will, we'll come back and we'll bring you another word from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But until that time, Oh, boy, you be saved and you be blessed is my prayer. Amen.